this is my current project. Uh, this is an internal memory expansion for the Commodore WIC-20. Uh, this is uh, internal expansion and it plugs in uh, into this uh, kernel ROM here in this uh, WIC-20. So the PCP plugs in here and this ROM is then moved to the PCP and the PCP then got like two memory chips and some logics there. It also needs some signals from the cottage. Next step is to print the UV mask. I decided this to be two side PCP but uh, I try to make it so that you can actually do it one side and just use few jumper wires to wire up the rest of it so that it's more easy to etch at home. So I prepared now the mask, only the uh, backside of the PCB and I'm going to print it to the transparent. So here is the mask printed. Um, I always print it twice so I can get a little bit better better mask by putting two layers on top of each other and I also use this density spray to enhance it a little bit. I found a nice piece of um, UV sensitive board that the mask fit there quite nicely so now it's time to give it some light. Okay, now it takes about one and a half minutes. Okay, now it should be finished. Let's see. You can faintly see that there is the PCP and uh, the traces and now we need to develop this. Okay, you can see I'm actually actually using a drain opener for developing. Let's see what happens. So this happened. Uh, it actually was too strong developer and uh, it basically edited some of the mask too. Uh, <laughs> I found one full piece of this board and it even says that use half strange developer. So I'll try this again. Okay, second try and now it looks better. I just diluted the developer a bit and uh, seems to be working nicely now. So next step is to actually etch this. So here we go and it's in the etching machine right now. It's going to take 10-15 uh, minutes maybe even more the acid is not not warmed up so it takes a bit more time. Time for the next step which is to drill all the holes for the BCB and uh, I have this really nice drill for that. So now this is drilled you can see the holes and uh, I also cut it a little bit smaller with my Dremel. Now I just need to wash it with the acetone because there is still this protective lac here that protects it from the etching. etching and it's not going to work if I try to solder on it. It resists the solder quite well so it must be washed away. Time to clean the PCP. I'm using this paint cleaner for it. 
So let's see. Here we have the PCP when I you can see how it reacts to the paint cleaner. It removes the protective lack. Okay, I'm going to now clean this. Quick jump forward. So I already soldered the PCP. So this is the front side and the uh, back side is not so nice because as I said uh, I did design this as a two-sided but uh, as a prototype board it's much easier to just jump wire the other side and it was easier to do the wires in this back side too so it looked a big, bit ugly but I think it works. Now the memory extension is installed. Uh, it's just plugged into the uh, kernel slot, the socket and the kernel is now here. And I have also wired the uh, cartridge slot. There are the signals like the blue ones are the RAM 1, 2, 3 and these white ones are the block selection signals. We have the address line 13 which is the green one and the yellow one is a VIC read-write signal. These wires here they are just looping this uh, connectors here because I yet don't have a dip switch or dip switches I could use to select different memory blocks so currently everything is selected so the first three selects the uh, first uh, three kilobyte ex the extension and then we have the uh, different blocks here and uh, if we if we look at the screen we can see now that I have the maximum number of basic memory free and also I can write to block with the poke I can write to block 5 and it reads back OK which means that also the 8 kilobyte area that is reserved for the cartridge so uh, that is also working now I only need to install a either dip switches to the case or I might be doing a little bit more complicated solution using a microcontroller and LCD screen where you can then nicely select which memory block you use.